Battlefield 1, DICE's most successful Battlefield game released in the past seven years, is still going extremely strong even at the beginning of 2024. And there are several resurgences that have been happening with Battlefield 1, with sales going on, new players finding it, it being available on PS Plus and Game Pass, etc, etc. So I've put together a list of my top 10 tips as a 3 plus KD player and a 7 year veteran of Battlefield 1 for you to do as well as you possibly can do when you jump into the game. My name's Dame, this is Dame Over. And tip number one is to find the class that suits you. Each of the four classes in Battlefield 1 has its own role to play in terms of the squad, in terms of the team, and also with the weapons that you can get hold of, and that will dictate how you decide to play. And you are fairly limited depending on what weapons are available. For instance, for the support class, you have some LMGs that are much better from further away, so you can sit at the back and provide covering fire, but then you have something like the Burton, where you can get up close and spray people down with hip fire. Now this changes how you play as a support player drastically, the same goes for the medic class where you can be up close with some weapons but you have to sit a little bit further back behind the front lines with some of the others so test it out find out which combination of weapons and gadgets in each class works the very best for you for me personally i prefer something like the rsc and the medic class or the feather of optical the medic class is the strongest class in battlefield one because you can chuck down self heals constantly if you need to whenever i disengage from a gunfight i've made it a habit of making sure i chuck down a healing pouch to run over this means that I'm in the thick of it when I heal myself, heal my allies and also revive people. And that's just one way to play as a medic. You personally might prefer a different style of play if you want to be more of the run and gun player as the assault, you want to lay down suppressing fire as a support or you like to shoot heads from miles away as a sniper. The best way to find out which class suits you is to play as all of them. Challenge yourself. See if you can push the boundaries of what's expected of you with each class. You'd be surprised, especially with the scout class, just how aggressive you can be. Which brings us on to tip number two. Try out all the guns. Now, you'll be surprised about how many guns actually get completely slept on in Battlefield 1. I mentioned aggressive sniping just a minute ago, and you can take something like the Ross Mark III, the SMLE Carbine, the Arasaka, as all very good examples of being able to play aggressive as a scout and that difference in style of play applies to all of the classes. The weapons you choose within each class will dictate how aggressive or how passive you need to be within the game to be successful. Shotguns and SMGs play very very differently. The same thing with the single shot rifles and automatic rifles in the medic class and there's a big difference between the faster firing and slower firing LMGs. But the thing is in Battlefield 1 and what's so good about the weapon design and the weapon balancing is that not one weapon works for everybody. It goes a lot on feel. Now for me the Feder of Optical is out and out one of my favourite weapons, the same with the RSC like I mentioned before, but with the Scout class I much prefer to be aggressive with the SMLE Carbine, with the Ross Rifle and with the Assault class for instance I much prefer to go with the Ribeye Rolls. Ribeye Relay. Who knows how to pronounce it? No one really does. Some people absolutely despise those guns, but for me, they work incredibly well. And the way I found out what weapons I prefer is by trying the entire lot. I spent a lot of time going through every single weapon available and making sure I got a service start with every single one. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend that much time practicing with each gun, but it's definitely worth giving it a go, at least for a couple of rounds with each weapon so you can see how it works and see how it functions because it might just slot right into your style of play. And tip number three is that the movement is more complicated than you think. The movement in Battlefield games can be relatively clunky. Battlefield hasn't been known for its extremely fluid movement in the past, although it has got a lot better. In Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 2042, the movement has improved. But in Battlefield 1, people can tend to think that it's actually pretty clunky, but I know very different. Now, there is one particular movement mechanic that I don't see getting used very often at all, but it's something that I do all the time and is an extremely useful technique to get you out of a gunfight that you don't want to be in or to help you reposition if you're under fire. And if you watch my live streams, you would have seen me do this hundreds and hundreds of times per stream. I will jump and then hit the slide button just before I hit the ground to use my momentum to carry me just that little bit further. Now, if you're going down a steeper hill, it will carry you absolutely miles, much further than you should expect to go. But by using gravity and using the physics aspects of the game, because there are destructible environments, gravity within Battlefield 1 does play a really, really big part. You can send your character model absolutely flying. It saved me from taking unnecessary deaths on so many different occasions. And in terms of your actual speed on the ground, it increases that so much more if you use it at the right times. Give it a little bit of a practice. If you're on a hill, jump and slide and see if you can hit the slide button as your feet are gonna hit the ground and you'll go much further and much faster 
than you would be able to normally. Now, taking advantage of a technique like that and trying your best to parkour all over the place, climbing up different parts of buildings over rubble, etc., etc., will give you a massive advantage over players that just won't think in those terms. If you can get above your opponent or find a cheeky little angle that they're not going to be looking at, you're definitely going to have the advantage and chances are you're going to walk away from the gunfight and they're not. Which brings us nicely onto the next point and that is positioning. Now my actual technical skill in the gunfights isn't particularly good. My stats are as good as they are here as you can see on the screen mostly because of my positioning. I outthink other players. I get into a position where it's impossible for them to fight back or I make it very very difficult for them to fight back easily. I know personally from my own skill that I cannot rely on my gun skill to get me through a gunfight so I need to make sure I'm outplaying them in a slightly different way. So I always make sure to try and find those angles that players are going to really struggle with and making sure I'm trying to think in terms of what the other players are going to be doing. If there is a part of the map that has a lot of footfall through it and people just run straight through, I'm going to make sure I sit slightly off to the side to catch them off guard. Even buying enough time to get yourself one or two shots off before they can fire back can make a huge difference to the chances of you surviving that gunfight. And trying to third party a gunfight happens so very often and can result in lots of success, especially in game types where you need to push forward quite a lot like front lines which has been available on battlefield 1 for quite some time now i'm hoping it doesn't disappear because it is actually my favorite game type but taking advantage of an enemy being in a fight with one of your team so they're not looking at you will obviously give you a big advantage especially if they've already been damaged by your team's fire the way to approach it is to think what would be the most annoying place to be shot from by the enemy team in this particular moment so flip the script imagine you're that player and imagine what part of the map that the enemy team could be placed in that's going to infuriate you so much because you didn't think they were going to be there that is the position you need to take as often as you can and the thing is with positioning you need to know where the enemy are so you can be proactive in your decisions and where to position yourself so here is another bonus tip that i'm going to chuck in here spot everything spam that spot button as often as possible not only is it going to reveal very important information to you personally but it also puts them on the mini map for your entire team so you're increasing the odds of one of your teammates giving you some backup because you fed them information by just spamming the spot button i've had to replace over the past seven years four different controllers because the right bumper aka the spot button for the xbox has completely been ruined i press it constantly and honestly it's one of the big keys to the success I've got in Battlefield 1. Tip number five is to use your gadgets correctly. I see loads of players completely wasting their gadgets and even seven years into the life cycle of Battlefield 1 still see veteran players not using their flares correctly with the scout class. Make sure, just like with the guns, you practice with each of those gadgets and you work out where they work best and how they support your team. With the flares, you just need to fire them at the spot that you want to be lit up on the minimap. Saving your anti-tank grenades to actually fight tanks is a big bonus and can definitely benefit your team. And for the love of God, if I see another support player that isn't carrying ammo. But anyway, the point is use the gadgets, practice with each of them, find which ones work best for you, but also think about your squad and your team. The absolute must-haves for me for each class are with the assault, you have to carry dynamite. With the medics, you have to carry a syringe. Support, you have to carry ammo. And with the scout class, you absolutely need to have those spotting flares. Otherwise, you have completely nullified most of the players in your squad because you cannot utilize your gadgets or help the team very effectively. Number six is a general gameplay point, and this one's pretty simple. You do not always have to go for the kill. While it is tempting after you've damaged a player to chase them down and finish that kill off even if you do have to leave your really good position of cover where you can't get shot from anywhere else i would urge you to not chase that kill down if you're under fire you don't always have to get the kill someone else on your team might sweep it up you might get an assist counts as kill it's way better to stay alive and stay active in an objective area than dying because you were too impatient and just left your point of cover and left your power position it's a very important point here with this one guys dead players cannot capture flags which brings us very nicely onto tip number seven, PTFO, play the objective. Battlefield 1, like all Battlefield games, is an objective-based game. 
If all you're doing is looking to try and rack up as many kills as possible, unless you're playing team deathmatch, then you are not going to have a good time. Now, this isn't to say that players can't play however they want. If you want to sit at the back of the map with a sniper and try and pick off a few people from 500 meters away, that is totally up to you. The issue with that playstyle, however, is you are missing out on so much of the action and so much opportunity and potential for you to one, affect the game, two, help your team, and three, have some more fun personally by racking up some more kills. Now the same thing goes for people that like to run and gun. If what you're doing is chasing people down out of their spawn instead of sitting around an objective, you're going to miss out on all of that concentration of the enemy team that are pushing the objective because luckily in Battlefield 1 most players do like to play the objective. So even if you are a new player and you're not terribly confident with Battlefield 1, the objective areas are the busiest parts of the map. You're only going to learn by practicing. So get yourself stuck in, get involved and help out your team. Number eight is a huge tip and probably the most useful one actually out of this entire lot. And it is one to help with your gunplay in particular, tap fire. Tap firing or burst firing with any weapon that you're using, if it's applicable, is absolutely the best way to go to stay as accurate as possible. Spamming the weapon to fire at its fastest fire rate continuously will only lead to you being inaccurate and will chances are end up with you dying a hell of a lot more than you need to. Learning how to do this properly with the assault, medic and support classes will absolutely change the game for you. You can compete at much, much longer ranges with much more efficiency than you would be able to if you just held down the trigger. So take your favorite weapon, whichever one you're using right now, and try and tap fire. There are, however, some exceptions. Obviously, I didn't mention the Scout class just now because obviously they are single shot rifles and need to be chambered in every single time. The support class, however, with the LMGs in particular, those ones that have larger magazines, LMGs get more accurate over time. So actually holding down the trigger for LMGs can be very beneficial. Although burst firing with the Burton, the Parabellum and the IMG 08 18 can be very, very beneficial, especially at those longer ranges as well. Number nine is another general gameplay tip and that is about knowing the maps and knowing the power positions. This again all comes with experience but like most players in Battlefield 1 we are seven years in now most players will know the maps inside out without any question but not every player decides to use those power positions and use the map knowledge to their advantage. A power position is a part of the map that gives you an inherent advantage over the enemy team. So if there is an indestructible room that you can sit in and lay down fire over an objective that is a power position. If there is a particular piece of cover that you you can sit behind which grants you a head glitch then again that's another power position so do your research if you do happen to watch any battlefield one creators have a look at where they position themselves when you get killed by an enemy from a place that you weren't quite expecting have a look at the spot that they were in and try it out yourself this particular part is all about practice and about trial and error so you need to get stuck in and pay attention to your surroundings if you know where the power positions are then you know where the enemy is likely to be and this is only going to help you win more games and at the same time keep your KD much higher. And finally, tip number 10 with Gravitas. The most important tip I will ever give anyone that plays on Battlefield 1. The thing that drives players absolutely insane and makes me want to punch my own balls into a pulp. And that is wait for the revive. The amount of times I've marked someone for a revive so they absolutely know that I'm coming to get them when I'm able to get them and they just don't wait. They just don't wait. They just skip it. Don't skip the revive. Don't skip the revive. Just don't do it. Having more players in an objective area or just anywhere is only beneficial to you. It's your KD that you're ruining. It's your positioning that you're giving up. You're the person choosing to make yourself run for another 10 minutes before you can get involved in the action. Just let the medic do the goddamn job. Let them revive you. Wait for it. Don't skip it. Everyone say it with me. Wait for it. Don't skip it. One more time. Wait for it. Don't skip it. Please, just guys, just please. Just, just wait for the revive. God. God help me. Honestly, it would be the best way to start 2024 if you do that. I just, it drives me absolutely insane. Anyway, so those are my top 10 tips for anyone that might be new or even those veteran players in Battlefield 1 from a player who has a 3 plus KD. I hope you found some of those tips useful. Let me know if I missed anything that you think is really useful in Battlefield 1 down in the comments. If you didn't get it from earlier, I stream four or five times throughout the week. So if you wanted to get involved in that action live, make sure you have subbed to the channel, hit the like button, 
button. I'd really appreciate it. Join the Discord and all of that stuff that's down in the description. And I will catch you next time. That's game over. Peace.